Before I was arrested in February 1963, Jin Kui and a few other members of the Socialist Club came to see me and asked me what they can do when we all go into prison. Well, I told him that firstly, he has to be prepared to go to prison because the atmosphere then was a very precarious one for anyone who had the courage to come out. He said he was prepared and was determined to take the challenge. I was very impressed. Then he knew that the best way for him to serve our people is to go into the trade union. So after graduation, he sacrificed a, prospect, a good prospective job and went straight into the trade unions where he was paid a measly sum. He became the best secretary of the Singapore Business Houses Employees Union, a union largely of English educated workers. There he fought for the workers' rights and helped to elevate their standard of living. He participated in the 1963 elections, nearly got in by a mere few hundred votes, but as expected, he was arrested together with scores of other candidates in that election. Even those without trade union background were arrested, and I remember welcoming the newly arrested people, scores upon scores of Ranta graduates. Now today, uh, yesterday, I heard on the internet Dr. Tony Tan trying to relate terrorism with all those who were arrested. Now, I challenged Dr. Tony Tan to categorically state that we are terrorists, so you can have the opportunity to bring him to court and sue him for slander. <laughs> Is Dr. Tony Tan implying that I, Dr. Po Su Kai, and many others are terrorists? Is he implying that Li Mao Seng, Liu Sheng, and others are terrorists? That Said Jahari is a terrorist? Let him come out and say categorically, are we terrorists? Either he's an ignoramus or he's a blatant liar. In both cases, that is most unbecoming for a man of his position. The PAP has been using the ISA not for security reasons, but for suppressing legitimate political opposition. Batch after batch of detention to detainees since 1963 to 1987 were launched by the PAP to what they call suppress, to nip in the bud any opposition, uh, any distinted opposition arising in Singapore. That explains the death of political opposition until lately in the general elections. In the last general elections, we are happy to note that the new generation, the younger generation, did not have the baggage of terrorism the white terrorism that PAP has launched by Sir Kong Ho. At least now we are, they are all courageous to stand up and speak. And this is a very good sign that harbors very good, a very good uh, prospect for the future of Singapore. We depend on, on the young people to come up and turn a new leaf in the political uh, history of Singapore. Jin Kui, as you know, was detained twice, first in 1963 for three years, subsequently in 1967, uh, 77 for another period of time. The 1977 batch were composed of mainly doctors, lawyers, journalists, and whatnot. Are they all terrorists? We asked Dr. Tony Tan. One of them is now uh, important member at the Singapore uh, SMU. Are they all terrorists? 
you know, Jinquis, like all the other detainees of his batch in 1977, was subjected to physical and mental torture. And it is related that in his poetry, the, the, the one which is now circulated among you. I, I think remembering Jinkui reminds us of the urgency of having a commission of inquiry upon the treatment and the reasons for the arrest of detainees. This is important because many of us are all very old and we would like, like to have the privilege of giving evidence in this commission of inquiry. More importantly, the main culprit, Lee Kuan Yew, is still alive and hopefully and hopefully he's lucid enough to defend himself. So a commission of inquiry is not a vilification or a vendetta. If anything, it's just a verification of the truth. It is a vindication of the victims. And it is a fact it is to review all the facts so that objective historians can rewrite history. It's not for us to rewrite history. We only give you the facts. It's for objective historians to rewrite history, not dependent upon the lies that are turned out by the Ministry of Home Affairs. You all have read a lot about ill treatment of political detainees. Tan Jing Kui just now over the YouTube has revealed something. Now, few other books have revealed a great deal of details. Teo So Lan's book, Beyond the Blue Gate, has given you a very de uh, detailed description of the treatment in the holding center. Another one is Mr. Francis Xiao's book, To Catch a Tata. And uh, recently on the YouTube, I've read about uh, this Dr. Ang Ji Chai, an orthopedic surgeon, who has told you about how she was treated when she was arrested in 1977. As you know, Ang Ji Chai now is in England. So a commission of inquiry will have to open up everything for public scrutiny. Here in Singapore, we have a beautiful parliament house where all the tourists can go and admire. But we do, many of our citizens do not realize that an essential part of the parliamentary system are the political prisons. The whereabouts are not even known to our citizens, let alone the atrocities that were perpetrated inside there. We all know about the atrocities against the Arab prisoners in Abu Ghraib and the Guantanamo prisons in the United States. But we are not aware of the similar atrocities that were carried out against political detainees in Singapore. The Amnesty International has recorded all this, and the Amnesty International has emphasized that electrical shocks have been applied to detainees, even to women detainees. The Commission of Inquiry will reveal all these facts to all and sundry and the world should know how Lee Kuan Yew has hold on to power for the last 50 years, not by the ballot, but the brutality of the special branch. <laughs> After the last general elections, Lee Hsien Dong said, nothing is sacrosanct and must be reviewed and, uh, and examined. But he's significantly silent on the Internal Security Act. Why is he so quiet on whether he wants to review the Internal Security Act? Is he holding that as a reserve power to safeguard the PAP's power position? Now, Tan Jin Kui has done research in the secret archives in the British uh, Museum. And in one of his uh, discoveries, 
He revealed that in 1961, when the Barisan Socialist was formed, Lee Kuan Yew suggested to the High Commissioner in Singapore, Dr. Lord Selkirk, that he, Lee Kuan Yew, would instigate riots and disorder so as to give the British an excuse to ban the constitution and do away with elections. This is a fact which we have revealed in the book, The Fajar Generation. If it's not true, then Lee Kuan Yew could sue us for being lied. It's all in the record. Now, we must know the past so that we can take precautions against these things happening again in the future. History tends to repeat itself. If the PAP were to face a sure defeat in the general elections, would they try to launch another cold store operation to vanquish the opposition before staging another stamp election as they did in 1963? Can they not create some kind of artificial situation like riots, instigate, provoke riots, so that they give them an excuse to give to give them an excuse to use the ISA again to launch a massive arrest of political opposition? It is not beyond that, considering the tra track record. They talk as though they have the right to be in power for another 30 years. So it is important that all of us are aware of what has happened before so that we can take precautions against this happening again in the future. Now Jin Kui has devoted his life to revealing the truth so that our people are aware of the truth about the democratic freedom in Singapore. In a country where Political dissent can mean a double decade or more of detention without trial. The democracy that Lee Kuan Yew brags about is nothing but a cruel and inhuman deception. Uh, evidence of the vindictiveness and uh, of a tyrant that is masquerading as a democrat. Jin Kui has also recorded for historical purposes all the experiences of political detainees. The book on Comet in the Sky, the book on My Thoughts Are Free, and then the subsequent book on May 13th generation, at the Faja generation. All these are valuable references for human rights students in Singapore. Even in the last days of his life, he has traveled to KL and to Penang to launch the book, The May 13th Revolution, which is a very important record of the contributions of the Chinese school students in our anti-colonial struggle. The subsequent suppression of this generation of political activists represents the very massive and shameful betrayal by the PAP of this group of political activities which were responsible for bringing the PAP into power in the first place. It is my privilege and pride to salute to a courageous and dedicated socialist warrior, Comrade Tan Jing Kui. Thank you.